Okay, welcome back everyone. Uh, let's move ahead with uh, our session C and I will immediately give the floor to Marino Jalalambidis from SNSJU office who will be our moderator for this session. So Marino, please go ahead, the floor is yours. We cannot hear you. I guess you're muted. Can you hear me now? Yes, much better. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. So my name is uh, Marinos Karalambidis. I'm a project officer with the SNSJU, um, and I'm moderating the third session, which is on reliable AI uh, for 63 communication systems and services, but also on reliable services and uh, smart security. Um, I would uh, kindly ask all presenters, we have 10 of them in, in this session, uh, to keep uh, to, to, to the five minute rule. So let, let's get started. Uh, first presenter is um, Alfonso Carillo Aspiazu from Open Nebula Systems. Uh, Alfonso, can you please share your slides? I can see the slides. Can you? Um, I cannot hear you though. If you are muted, please unmute yourself. Uh, I can still not hear you. Alfonso, can you uh, connect again your audio? Yeah, Alfonso, you seem unmuted from WebEx application, but there's probably some issue with your mic uh, locally with your laptop. If, hello, can you hear me? Ah, yeah, we can hear yes. you now. Great. Yeah. Uh, you see my screen as well? Yes. Okay, excellent. Um, yeah, my name is Alfonso Carrillo Espiazu. I am a, a senior local. Open Nebula has been uh, in business in 2008 and uh, commercial business uh, project started in 2005 as part of the Universidad Complutense de Madrid. Offices in several places in Europe and in America. And basically, our uh, we have a platform that allows you to um, virtualize infrastructure, uh, old container uh, cluster, clusters of containers, and that way you can have uh, federated solutions. And we are very much uh, involved on Telco Edge uh, applications right now, specializing in artificial intelligence. Uh, we, well, some of the benefits of the platform is a very single instant platform. It's a single module that covers all the needs for orchestration, federation, uh, edge cloud continuum as a way to utilizing hyperscalers, uh, bare metal resources. Uh, we have um, several major customers across very different um, industrial verticals. As you can see here, we'll go quickly over this. And what's more interesting for us uh, regarding SNS projects is the innovation projects we're working on right now. We're involved in several of them. See here the most important ones right now. They say sys the lower right hand is a 1.2 billion uh, EU investment from the European Union for 12 participating countries, and we are one of the some 50 direct partners on this project. What we are going to try to do there is to create a federated uh, edge computing solution across uh, all these countries. And then we have other AI related projects like uh, Cognit, uh, 6G Sandbox, uh, where we are also being the orchestration and federation platform for the uh, test beds that are spread around five countries in Europe. And more recently, we have this One Edge 5G project uh, that uh, is an intern, it's a Spanish sponsored, Spain sponsored project that try that will, uh, which we will do an industrial deployment 
of uh, neutral hosting uh, on 5G uh, use, utilizing uh, artificial intelligence. So that's um, where we are at. We have several use cases that we can uh, share with you if you're interested. And that's about uh, the presentation I have for you today. Marina, you're muted again. Right, okay. So th thanks again, uh, Alfonso, for, for the presentation. Uh, let, let's move to the second presenter, who is uh, Andreas Mitchell Thiel uh, from AI Vader. Yeah, we can see your slides. Um, Great. It's yours, Andreas. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, my name is Andreas Mitchell Thiel from AI Vader Game BH. Well, let me first introduce our company. Basically, we are a spin-off of the University of Technical University of Ilmenau, basically of my research group there. So we are placed in Germany. We basically provide at the moment three solutions. One is a 5G in a box solution, basically allowing you to have an easy setup and get a test environment uh, for yeah, for end-to-end -end testing or to integrate new functionalities in a, in a 5G system, stuff like that. Uh, this is basically a constantly evolving environment. To simplify the management uh, of 5G, especially 5G campus systems, we have an end-to-end -end SMO supporting orchestration and other things, management. I'll talk about this in a second. And I say we, that's basically a set of tools that supports you in the network management of, uh, of 5G, 4G, 5G network. So our key expertise basically also from our university background is on machine learning based uh, radio network management, the sun functionality kind of things. Uh, we also have a long experience in working on explainable AI. That's something we use basically in our day-to-day -day practice when we need to validate our machine learning algorithms. I talk about this a bit. And the other key uh, expertise is in prototyping, proof of concept kind of systems in, in the 5G, 5G area or developing towards 6G. So that's just a quick, uh, some screenshots from our end-to-end -end SMO, basically providing you a simple end-to-end -end management of a, of a 5G system where you can do fault management, performance management, configuration management, subscriber management, all the things you do. And the idea here to keep it very simple, but also very flexible at the same time. So that's one of our project. The other one is this, ML-based toolbox where we where we support different functions for uh, for network optimization. You know about this coverage, capacity optimization, energy saving, switching off stations, stuff like that, traffic steering, slicing, mobility management. These kind of these kind of things. So we basically have a, a set of microservice-based uh, tools. Everything is pretty much cloud-based. We are following here the corresponding uh, processes and it allows you, it's basically a complete ecosystem also to kind of to test all of these optimization uh, algorithms based on a, on a simulation environment. We also have an open brand based WIC uh, that we are using here. So probably the most interesting for 6G projects are our activities in the area of explainable AI. So as I said, we're using this for quite some time and basically at the university, all of my PhD students working on machine learning are uh, to have, have the task to use this tool to check, to validate if their solution is working. So it basically allows you to validate you complete management or optimization chain uh, and especially it allows you to identify what are the what are the hot issues what are the, the the issues in your network where you have problems things you need to solve things like that 
and get a better understanding of what's going on, not just in your machine learning uh, system, but also in, in your network as a whole. So here you can see it's just a simple, a, a simple screenshot allowing you basically to kind of, I mean, unfortunately it's not animated here, but it kind of allows you to kind of scan through your network to look into the network from different dimensions, which is quite nice to understand what's really going on in, in more complex uh, network. And I think that would be the main topic for main interest for, for 6G, uh, but also the other issues could be of interest. Here are some, some partners. One are mainly, there. Thank you. They are mainly running uh, at the moment German uh, funded projects. And here are our contact contact data so just get in touch so if you feel that this could be of interest uh to you to your consortium just uh drop me drop me a quick email and we'll get in touch to you uh to start a discussion there so that's it for my part thank you very much for your interest thanks for your presentation andreas and thanks for keeping to the five minutes um, so our next presenter is uh, Elena Politi from uh, Harokopio University. Uh, Elena, can you please share your slides? Hello. Um, good afternoon to everyone. Can you see my slides? Can you hear me? We can hear you. We can uh, not see your slides yet. One second. Okay. Are we on? Yeah, we are. Perfect. Thank you so much. So, um, I'm Elena Politi. Hello, everyone. I represent Harakopi University of Athens uh, today, and our group is the Intelligent Computer Systems and Application Lab. Um, so Harokopio is um, a relatively small university in the center of Athens. Our school, um, the one of digital technology and our department of informatics and telematics comprises of more than 20 faculty members and several postdoc researchers, PhD candidates, and uh, so on. So our lab, the Institute of Computer Systems and Applications, as is, is a small a small um, group, uh, about 15 members. However, um, we participate in more than 15 R&D funded projects, European and non. And um, we also have experience in project coordination in Horizon Europe programs and uh, several publications as an academic institute. Uh, we're interested in publishing in top journals and very prestigious conferences. Also to be noted that we're, we're very good in proposals writing and we like it very much. So um, several um, areas of expertise of our lab uh, in, in network architectures and technologies are the intelligent transport system standards and protocols, um, vehicular communications in um, various uh, unmanned aerial systems, terrestrial un underwater unmanned systems, um, high-speed wireless access networks and uh, mobile communications in 5G and 6G, software-defined networking, network functions, virtualization management and orchestration, and quality of service um, experience in management of mobile networks. Also in services and applications, uh, we're interested in um, highly automated driving functions for uh, environmental perception and control. Um, AI-enabled optimization algorithms and performance and valuation of wireless systems. Uh, we are also uh, very active in um, uh, e-healthcare systems and various applications. And finally, the horizontal key activity is the technology acceptance modeling um, that we are also very active in. So these, um, these are some of the ongoing uh, EU projects that our lab is uh, involved. Um, there are also many uh, non-EU ones. So um, that's about uh, the end of my presentation. Um, please, uh, if you're interesting, interested to contact us, um, Professor Irini Liotu and Professor George Dimitrakopoulos, 
and uh, I myself, Elena Politi, a PhD candidate. These are my our emails, and thank you very much for your attention and time. Thanks for being punctual on time, Elena, um, and thanks for, for your presentation. So uh, let's move to the next uh, presenter, who is um, uh, Rasul Nikpat uh, Silab. Um, Rasul, are you online? Yes, I am online. Yeah. Thank you. So can you see my screen? Yeah. Yes. Okay, let's... okay so. Uh, hello, everyone. This is Rasul from CTTC, and I'm going to talk about the Saint Initiative Strategic AI Integration for the 16 networks. So I'm trying to address the stream B08, Reliable AI for 60 Communication and Services. So I am also the presenter C4 in the agenda if you want to uh, reach me out later. So who we are? So we are from the SAS group in the CTTC. Uh, CTTC's research hub in the located in the Castel de Fes, Barcelona. We are excelled in cutting edge telecommunication research. So the SaaS service as networks, we focus on the 5G, 6G infrastructure and architecture. We also uh, very good at centralized and decentralized network management. Our group integrate advanced AI ML to the networks, targeting extended reality, e-health and zero trust communication. So we are actively involved in several European Union and national level project, and we are contributing significantly to the ORAN net and network slicing, intelligent network management, and edge cloud continuum. So we have an extreme test bed, which is a uh, test bed for uh, uh, deploying this all advanced ideas related to the 6 c 5 g networks. So uh, I have also the more technical talk I presented last time, so you can find about it in the in the slides in the survey. So in this talk, we're going to talk about the SAINT initiative. So objective is to integrate the ad advanced AI to the a 60 network with the focus on the personalization, privacy, and efficiency. So the core component, as we talked in the previous presentation, is the on-device AI. So be prioritizing user privacy and system efficiency. And this comes from the recent advancement in the uh, hardware for the use, for example, the uh, Apple A17 Pro and Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen C. So these chips are capable of running advanced on-device AI. And also we want to create a synergy between on-device AI and cloud-based AI, which is very essential for running services like AR, VR, and in general, extended reality and network monitoring. So this is very aligned with the Stream B0, which tries to address the realistic and standardized AI application in a 16 network. So the, if we want to go more details, currently we are focusing in, in, in these categories. So we want to de deploy network monitoring and orchestration with the LLM. So we want to create and utilize a, a large language model, which is fine-tuned on the telecommunication data and use this, uh, this LLM for the high level decision making in the 60 network. We want to create a telecommunication specific data set consists of the two parts. First part is the comprehensive knowledge regarding the 3GPP standardization and also uh, the HC standard. The second part, we want to uh, utilize a, a digital twin to, to get the, um, the most realistic like log level information about the already deployed or simulated uh, network. In the second part, we want to focus on the blockchain-based solution for the security. Currently, especially after the rise of the um, generative AI, we have we see many, many fake calls, malicious AI-generated content, and I think it's a very important topic to address these things in the future of this, this field. So we will utilize the uh, authentication based on the blockchain technology, public-private key to address some of these issues. And then lastly, we want to create trust for AI through the federated learning, zero knowledge ML and explainable AI. Each of this component needs its own uh, slide, but here briefly, so we try to utilizing these tools, create the, the privacy for the data in the model and the readability of the different component uh, in the system. So this is, the, our current uh, consortium, we already have, we are three partner, CTTC, the SAS group, so we, we are ready to take the technical coordinator, we are seeking this, this partner, mobile operators, and we are also interested in three more uh, partners in general. Also, we are looking for a, a partner for as a general coordinator of the project. And the budget of this project is $3 million, so the six or seven partner would be the ideal case, so we are looking for three or four more partners. These are my contact information. Please don't hesitate me to, uh, to send an email uh, or with my profile. I am the C4 um, uh, 
uh, presenter in the agenda, so you can easily find me. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Rasul. Thanks a lot. Um, the next presenter is uh, Yudainanto uh, Dui uh, Atmoyo. Uh, Yudainanto, are you? I can see you. Yes, okay. Hello. You. Good morning. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Can you please share your okay. your slides? Let me try to share the screen. Is it now visible? Do you see anything? Not yet. We can see you, but not your slides yet. Okay. Ah, okay. I forgot to choose. Just give me a moment. Some is, is something coming? Yep. Yeah. If you can go. Uh, exactly. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, good. Good, good day, uh, everyone. So my name is Udayan Mojo. Here I would like to present our organization and a couple of topics of interest and some of the relevant things that we would like to bring to uh, possible collaboration in the 6G uh, SNSGU uh, program. Maybe just a quick quick uh, recap of if, if, if um, you, you don't know about our organization. So we are a public research university, Aalto University, located in the Helsinki metropolitan area in Finland, uh, specifically in the Espo region. Uh, Aalto itself, uh, as a legal entity, was established in 2010 as a merger of uh, existing uh, universities or colleges. And basically, our, our technology or engineering faculties uh, previously were part of the Helsinki University of Technology, which has been has a long track records in the research and educational sector. So we, the Helsinki University of Technology itself is, was established in the 1800 and then in the 1900 it uh, acquired university status. So we have very, very long uh, track record. And we are uh, doing this close collaboration uh, between uh, to foster this multidisciplinary education and research in general. So regarding this uh, uh, wireless connectivity uh, topics, uh, I would like to maybe start from uh, touching upon what we have uh, in terms of test network for 5G and beyond. So we have uh, our own uh, test network, which is uh, developed already. Um, so we have a uh, coverage, uh, outdoor coverage and in indoor coverage. Um, so the network itself is based on Nokia's uh, base station. Uh, so previously it was 4G and also 5G, which also uh, extends from the existing LTE based uh, NetLib. Uh, we, are in, and we also have an NP-IoT deployment as well. And what is uh, coming or actually recently or, or not recently, but kind of let's say coming is actually our indoor coverage which now spans uh, across uh, uh, various industrial test facilities or laboratories in our, in our, uh, in our institution. Uh, here just to show uh, some, some architecture of how it connects with a couple of uh, industrial test facilities that we have. So uh, we have, for example, Alto Factory of the Future and also Alto Industrial Internet Campus, which is uh, a couple of examples of uh, indoor deployment of our test network uh, that we can use for our coming projects as well. Uh, maybe this is just a couple of uh, recap or brief, brief, uh, brief activities that we have been doing uh, overall uh, in our school. So we have been participating in various uh, connectivity, uh, 5G and beyond related projects. So from, from the top and, and, and also what is uh, kind of ongoing or, or development recently is the Zero Zone project and also the Hexa X2, which is uh, we are also uh, kind of um, participating actively towards uh, beyond 5G and 6G and so on. Maybe just to quickly uh, give an overview of one example of uh, indoor test facility that that our test network is uh, able to 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 uh, to be used for the project. So we have an example of Auto Factory of the Future, which has a, which is industrial test facility with a comprehensive uh, IT and OT systems, which resembles a real industrial system that connects to physical industrial equipment. Uh, so we have not only the computer infrastructure, either cloud or edge IoT, but also the actual industrial machineries, which kind of, which is able to tap into this uh, test network connectivity uh, uh, resources. We have uh, ABB uh, Yumi robot, for example, collaborative robot. We have AGVs, uh, also assembly systems, man, uh, assembly systems, manufacturing systems, which, which has a complete automation system uh, with real industrial programmable logic controllers uh, and also what is uh, also interesting is as well machine vision and also immersive uh, augmented reality and virtual reality systems, which can be used uh, or 
and is able to use this uh, test network as well. And this is uh, a link to if you want to find out more about about this uh, test facility. Uh, this slide just uh, this slide is just trying to give like a couple of example of relevant topics, angles, ideas of what we could explore together in the uh, the future as NSGU proposal. So this is more cross topic or cross call, which of course could fall into uh, one or more uh, uh, SNSU uh, calls uh, depending on the concept. So, yeah, for example, that, yeah. so for example, we have uh, topics around trustworthy, reliable AI, opt uh, optimization of uh, network management, self updating, uh, self learning digital twin, enabling cyber security. And also sustainability. Uh, we have also a couple of ideas on this. Uh, how we can ensure the sustainability from using digital pa digital passport or uh, through the uh, LCA. And also, we're also interested at these large scale trials as well. That we have, uh, we are expertise in uh, kind of let's say as from the system engineering, system integration perspective with uh, with uh, with our test facility. This is just a couple of relevant calls that we are interested in, but this is not limited to this. And if you are uh, interested uh, to discuss a uh, report on potential collaboration, this is our contact details. And yeah, looking forward to discuss more. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Many thanks to Dianto. Thank you very much. Um, next presenter is uh, Yudani Riopo from uh, QOBIS Networks. Uh, Yudani, I can see you. And now I can see your slides. OK, can you see me? I can hear you. OK. Let's put on presentation mode. It's okay? Excellent. Yes, thank you. The floor is yours. Well, my name is Yudani uh, Riobo. I'm the head of innovation in Quobis. And Quobis is, um, is a lead MSME in the delivery of uh, Caritas Unified Communication Solutions for telcos and large enterprises. And it is a CC Infrastructure Association full member. Um, Quobis is uh, well known as one of the leaders in the deployment of uh, WebRTC technology after being involved in the release of the industry first uh, application server. Uh, today, this element is part of the core network of different telcos worldwide. And in addition, our platform is helping owners of large networks to defeat the challenges behind digital transformation processes using real time communications. Quobis uh, efforts. Um, are uh, focused on the development of new products with a special focus on security and interconnection. And we have a broad uh, knowledge about real-time communications protocols, working on research projects and also as a key partner for some of the larger uh, network integrators and service providers that see Quobis as the reference partner for projects with special needs uh, in unified uh, communications. Uh, our platform uh, is uh, now providing voice, video, and collaboration on several scenarios like uh, private uh, 5G networks, critical communications use cases, real time communications, and IoT for industry, its computing environment, and also taking care of uh, use cases with limitations related to legal compliance. In terms of uh, around the projects, we are working on artificial intelligence applied to video manipulation and voice transcriptions, the prioritization of emergency media flows over congested networks, uh, management of real-time communications alert, apply intelligence to avoid false positives, security on real-time voice and video services, machine learning uh, applied to time uh, to real-time communications routine. And we also have experience using the data channel for, for, machine, for machine control. Regarding the, the NERS Smart Network Services Core, our expertise and capabilities are focused on, on real time communications, and we think it has a wide range of, of applications. Here we highlight some key applications like security in time sensitive applications. Artificial intelligence for platform deployments on 6G networks, real time communications as a testbed for 6G KPIs, digital twinning for service uh, enablement 6G, and as vertical, we highlight uh, real time media based monitoring in, in mobility and 6G multimedia for health and motivation. 
uh, well, this is a summary of our expertise and capabilities. Uh, you can contact me for, for additional information or if you have any doubt on how we can fit in your proposals uh, and we can uh, try to uh, well, provide some, some feedback. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dani. Thanks a lot for the presentation. Um, so our next presenter is uh, Haralambos Rotsus from uh, Lancaster University. Haralambos, I, I, I can see you. If you can please share your, your slides. Um, yes, one second, sorry. <clears throat> um, wait, all right. Yeah, here we are. So if I do this. All right. Um, yes. Yeah. Can see the slides. Thank you, Perfect. Thank yeah. you very much. Um, right, thank you very much, Marinos. Uh, thanks everybody also <clears throat> um, for attending this presentation. So my name is Carla Bozorotsos. I am um, a, a senior lecturer here at Lancaster University. I'm a member of the networking group, um, and I'm here to present some of the um, capabilities that the uh, our, our research group offers. Uh, members of this group also include Professor Nicholas Reis and Professor Paul Smith. Um, so um, the networking group is part of the School of Computing and Communications of Lancaster University. Um, we are a rather recent university built in the 60s, um, but the School of Computing um, is one, it's, it's a rather old uh, computer science department established in 1983. Um, networking was one of the um, um, first groups that was part of the uh, of the department. We have more than 40 years of active research in, uh, in networking. So we were we developed like um, one of the first stacks the, for IPv6 that Microsoft Windows used, um, and we have also other achievements like um, the, the design of the Microbit, which is a very popular platform for IoT systems. Um, we have approximately 50 academic staff, um, and we have expertise relevant to this call on networking, security, and comms. But we also have lots of experience with interdisciplinary research. Um, more recently, also, we're establishing here um, um, a, a 20 million uh, investment by uh, the Ministry of Defense to establish a security and protection science institute, um, which um, we aim to, to have like a number of new academics also being part and um, building new facilities here as part of this. Um, as a research partner, we have a, a wide range of um, uh, topics that we have um, been exploring um, as a group. Um, we have also been part of uh, several past EU projects, um, but due to the Brexit situation, we, we haven't had this opportunity lately. So lately, we have been primarily involved in uh, national projects. Um, we have a lot of expertise in resilience work, both theoretical as well as practical with applications on cloud. Um, and energy um, uh, delivery. Um, we also have a, a large portfolio on media delivery platforms uh, and designing systems to support that. More relevant to this call, uh, we have um, an extended uh, research uh, expertise on network management. And more recently, we have uh, we were part of a major uh, UK project called Tudor, um, which is around 15 million uh, pounds budget where we explore um, non-terrestrial and terrestrial network integration for 6G communications. And as part of this project, we're exploring um, how we can improve automation and autonomic networking for 6G networks. We also have activity on standards bodies. Uh, we, we contribute code to the um, OSM and we have a couple of POC um, um, uh, submissions. Uh, we are active members of the TMF Forum, the Autonomous Network Group, and we are co-designing uh, intent uh, network standards. And also in the IRTF, we have a number of um, RFCs and also um, members of the group uh, chair, the TVR group. Now, relevant to this call, uh, I just want to give you a bit of an idea of, the, of our expertise. So the first topic, which probably um, is relevant to this call, is around the topic of orchestration and how we can use intent-based networking to um, enable multi-domain deployment of services in mobile networks. Um, we already have some established work uh, through the Tutor project exploring this topic. Um, and effectively, uh, we would like to um, uh, uh, explore uh, the concept of intents as a way to uh, allow end users to um, order services from a 6G, 5G, 6G mobile network, as well as explore how intents can be used as a way to negotiate how we deploy service when we when we go across domain um, because 6G probably will um, require 
uh, network operators to collaborate, you know, to deliver services. And you know, you would have your non-terrestrial network uh, operators that they have somehow to figure out ways to plug their code um, and their services with um, traditional mobile terrestrial mobile network operators. Um, we have some existing um, proof of concept uh, work. Uh, we also have been building um, an intent handler technology, which is supports uh, TMF forum standards around intents. Um, and we currently would be interested to explore um, how we can um, integrate some of our work on uh, the, the mobile domain. Um, another one minute, please. Yes, one other, one other type of topic that we're exploring currently right now in collaboration with BBC is around uh, video delivery. And effectively, we're trying to develop the next generation of video delivery platforms for personalized video based around B object media. Um, we have developed currently in Lancaster a platform based around Kubernetes, where effectively we're able to deploy in operator networks uh, platforms which they can transcode video in order to deliver personalized object media videos. And we would like to explore how this can be adopted in a mobile 5G environment and use 5G core uh, APIs for traffic influencing effectively to improve QoS and QoE for users. And here's our contact details, um, and we would be really happy uh, to, to be involved in preparing um, proposals. That's it from me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Harald Lambos. Many thanks. Um, our next uh, presenter is uh, Eric Kiefer-Aho from VTT. Eric, I can see you. Hello. Uh, Hi. Second, let me try to get that. Can you see my my slides? Yes. Not yet. Uh, let's just go this one. How about now? They're coming up. Yep. Thank you. You have five minutes. Thanks. Is this in proposal mode? Um, it's, it's not on presenters mode. I have a presenter mode. Sorry. Yeah, and this yes. is why. It probably won't let me know. Uh, I hope this is. It's because of this PowerPoint tool that doesn't like to change things. Feeling that might happen. Let me try one more. I apologize. <laughs> Try that one more time. Okay. How about now? Yeah, yeah. It works now. Thank you. Okay. And let's go back. All right. Um, my name is Eric Yadahu. Um, I'm a researcher at VTT. Uh, you've already heard a couple talks, so I'm not going to get into the big organization, but uh, we're part of the Applied Cryptography Research Group. And um, Applied cryptography is a little bit, um, maybe a little bit unclear sometimes, but um, did that slide change? There we go. Um, so, post a, a, a variety of topics that we cover are, um, and very importantly is post quantum cryptography, uh, quantum key, key distribution, um, privacy, digital identities, security metrics, and a variety of other uh, topics. And, why I'm here today for this uh, call is we're interested in possibly joining any types of consortiums that are needing some additional um, partners for security implementations or privacy and varieties of sorts. Um, post quantum crypto, um, I'm not gonna go into too much detail. I have a few slides, but I'll jump through them quickly. Um, this is essentially coming from the threat of quantum computers being able to um, solve problems much faster than um, than our classical systems. And so what we need is to adapt our public key infrastructure um, to be able to be prepared for the, quantum, the threat of quantum computers being powerful enough to crack uh, current public key uh, infrastructure. Uh, and so, the impact on this infrastructure is coming from the fact that, um, so our in the classical sense, uh, discrete log logarithms and um, coming from finite fields and elliptic curves, these can these hard problems in classical sense can be cracked by Shor's algorithm, and therefore we need what's called post quantum cryptography. And so where we're wanting to um, basically develop 
or use hard mathematics to or different mathematics that is considered hard to um, or harder to break with quantum computers. And here's quickly uh, in terms of quantum computing. Currently, IBM has a computer now with a, a thousand uh, qubits and uh, art, which has made it so that our, the current classical RSA encryption, it still needs quite a few uh, qubits to to get to that level to be uh, unsecure, but it'll be coming around. And this formula that can be seen to the right um, can be something that it should be kept in mind in terms of um, store or how long you want your data to be safe. And so that's that's one of the big threats that come along with um, this idea of when when our quantum computer is going to be actually uh, legitimately um, a threat to our data. And so um, at VTT, we actually have a couple quantum computers now. Um, we are in recent, we recently last year got a 20 qubit computer running and um, and we have a five qubit as well. And I believe they're working on a 50 that should be done by the end of the year. Um, NIST has this PQC standardization project going and that's been going for many years. I'm not going to all these details, but um, our our team is familiar with all of these new standards that will be or they're going to be standardizing eventually soon and um, we have experience in implementing them and we want to take part in projects where there's um, starting to, to implement the transition into this post quantum uh, era of, of uh, cryptography. Um, one project from a few years ago is this PQC Finland and we also have other um, projects currently um, being proposed for another um, level of implementation of PQC. And falls of interest, um, these are a couple of them, of course. Um, so the system ar architecture one, that was one that the uh, resilient security, trustworthy and privacy, and another call of the reliable AI. Um, there's a requirement for security metrics. And so we would be interested in um, if there's any consortiums looking for um, support in these uh, areas. And just a couple last slides, quantum communications, we have QKD project, that was that one. And um, then cryptography and privacy, but um, that's that's all I, we could always check it out later. And here's my information. And that's also my team leads um, contact info. Thank you very much, Eric. Um, thanks a lot. Uh, so we, we move on to the next presenter, who's uh, uh, Antonio Slalas. Uh, Hello. Uh, Hi. To share my screen. Yes, thank you. Just a minute. So Antonio is from CERT and ITI. Uh, we can still not uh, see the screen, Antonio. Yeah, sorry, I had a conflict with another software module. Uh, Okay, you you can see me now, and I share also my screen. That's great. If you can go into presenters mode, yes, yes. So can you see in full screen now? Excellent. Yes, thank you. You have five minutes. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. So, uh, uh, CERT ITI is uh, active in different aspects of AI powered five G six G network. Uh, Okay, so uh, CERT is a research organization. Um, it's uh, listed uh, among the top 20 EU institutions in terms of participation in competitive research grants. Uh, Information Technologies Institute is one of the institutes uh, within CERT. Uh, it is uh, first uh, uh, in, uh, in Europe in the last uh, consecutive years uh, within um, uh, research grants as well. Uh, the topics um, uh, we are working on is artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning and decision making, uh, robotics, visual analytics and uh, uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, uh, IoT, telecom, 5G, 6G, cybersecurity, uh, e-health and remote sensing. Uh, this is an overview of the facilities uh, we have um, uh, in our uh, um, uh, organization, different um, hardware and software modules, autonomous vehicles, additive manufacturing, and a whole smart home as well. Uh, the smart home involves different technologies that could can further uh, test and um, provide different kind of use cases. We have also a 5G testbed, core and run, uh, 
uh, within uh, this uh, facility uh, to run the different experiments uh, regarding 5G. There is also an autonomous vehicle and a use case um, of teleoperation of this vehicle over the 5G testbed we have. Uh, we are active in different uh, projects, uh, for example, uh, NYOVE, that we were the coordinator, the Zero Swarm as well, uh, the ARO project that is part of the open call of CZ Sandbox, and the NADWAR project where we are also the coordinator and uh, started uh, just this month uh, within the frame of the second uh, SNS call. Uh, in cyber security, uh, we are active in different areas uh, about cyber physical security, distributed AI, vulnerability identification and classification, blockchain, penetration testing, uh, CTI, cyber ranges, uh, biometrics, uh, to name a few. Uh, this is some overview of the work we have done uh, within uh, about 5G tailored AI based intrusion detection system within Sanko Scenario projects. Also, at this generation, uh, we have produced uh, dedicated attacks on the AMF using SCTP protocol uh, in these projects. Uh, also, AI-based uh, penetration testing in 5G environment. Uh, V2X enablers uh, regarding predictive resource allocation uh, of V2X functions uh, using artificial intelligence algorithms in terms of the 5G routes project. Uh, we are also have some work in multi-physics simulations about microelectromechanical systems uh, and MEMS in, um, uh, in the context of, uh, let's say, metasurfaces and applications related to metasurfaces, uh, such as in wire power and transfer systems and other application domains. Uh, some of them of, um, uh, is part of the reconfigurable intelligence surfaces uh, technology uh, that is utilized currently in different application domains. For example, in the show project, we have developed RIS uh, for different um, use cases within the context of mobility. Also, we continue the work uh, regarding AI-based anti-jamming and anti-spoofing in V2X uh, communications uh, within the Ultimo project. And now we are, we are further going to escalate this work in the network project as well. Uh, we have participated in the Deep Sense uh, 6 Challenge. So we got the fifth place with the Ultimo team, uh, providing uh, a solution for the beam classification, categorization, and blockage classification uh, problem. Uh, our research interests include, uh, of course, the AI powered cybersecurity, cloud edge computing, AI predictive resource allocation, physical layer, neuromorphic computing. Uh, we have done some work in the context of Neoteric project, uh, photonic integrated circuits, RIS, uh, anti-jamming technology, and also simulation of viral power and transfer using a variety of metasurfaces uh, for different applications. Uh, so, in terms of SNS, uh, we are uh, interested in participating in various um, uh, calls. Uh, we have expertise regarding uh, providing AI solutions for telecommunications, digital network winning for, for the first call. Uh, for the second, um, we can provide expertise okay. regarding machine, machine learning, uh, reconfigurable surfaces and EMF issues, uh, different kinds of AI approaches, SDN resource allocation for the third call. Uh, for the cyber security call, of course, we have a lot of expertise to provide uh, about AI solutions, uh, about trustworthy services, etc. Uh, we are interested also in participation um, in, in other calls. Uh, uh, we provide RIS implementations and AI enable run uh, and different, uh, let's say, expertise also for energy efficiency and energy consumption optimization. Uh, also, we have solutions about data acquisition, generation, repositories, curation of data that will be useful in the 1-8 call about uh, reliable AI communications. And uh, we can provide different use cases in the other calls uh, uh, that may be needed. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, we are open for collaboration um, with all of you. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you, Antonio. Many thanks for your presentation. Um, so, our uh, last presenter in this session is uh, Mattia Fogli. Uh, Mattia, can you hear us? Hello. I'm here. Hello, everybody. Sharing my screen. And now you should see my presentation, yep, right? We can. Yeah, Thank you very much.
So I'm Mattia Fogli, postdoc at the University of Ferrara, Italy. I participate in this project with Carlo Gianelli, professor um, at the same university. Here, just um, an overview of our research group, which is the Distributed Systems uh, Research Group uh, at the University of Ferrara. It is a collaboration between the uh, Department of Engineering and the Department of Mathematics and uh, Computer Science. You can find more information um, at that link if you're interested about. Okay, and this slide instead of some details about um, national and regional projects in which we are currently involved. We also have a couple of NATO projects, so more on uh, the defense uh, um, domain. Um, about our area of expertise, we are primarily working on digital twins. Uh, in our view, a digital twin is a um, piece of code that provides um, representation of an object. This object can, uh, can be, you know, a network, an industrial machine, a device, whatever. It, works, it also works as a gateway. So applications and services interact with uh, the underlying object through the digital twin. And of course, it also integrates uh, a model of the object, which can be used to conjecture about what might happen or what might have happened. In our view, what primarily distinguishes digital twins from uh, um, traditional software components is, this, uh, um, is the entanglement. And I'm using the word entanglement here to denote how well a digital twin mirrors the object in the virtual space and the extent to which the object behavior aligns with uh, the command uh, issued by the digital twin. The main point here is that, so the question here is, how can I be sure that a digital twin is entangled? Because if it isn't, it either, it either means, you know, that the digital twin is providing a past representation of the object or the commands I'm sending are not pushed downwards timely. And that is a very, um, you know, important problem because if a digital twin is not entangled, it means that it's unreliable and I cannot rely on the information it provides. We are currently working on what we call uh, an entanglement of our ecosystem and our reference scenario is the cloud to edge continuum. This ecosystem consists of a metric to measure entanglement as I've uh, uh, just defined. And, you know, here we need, we, we need a metric because if you cannot quantify it, you cannot um, do much about it. And um, in the context of this ecosystem, you're also working on how to engineer digital twins, both from a microservices and serverless perspective. And of course, the middleware itself for the um, digital twin orchestration. We are working on top of Kubernetes through custom resource definitions and operators. So what truly matters is that this middleware or this digital twin orchestration, orchestration cannot only just about service orchestration. Communication plays an, a fundamental, uh, fundamental role. Because even if you think that digital, a digital twin is provided with enough resources to run properly and everything, still a bad network connectivity can make it disentangled and therefore unreliable. You cannot rely on the information it provides. So here we are looking at this joint orchestration between communication and computation resources. Here's some uh, um, contact information. Feel very free to reach out to us if you, you know, have questions, comments, uh, or just require some uh, additional information. And that's it. Thank you for your attention. You are muted. Thanks a lot, Mattia. Um, so this, this essentially concludes uh, the third session. Um, so the microphone back to Costas. Uh, I think there's, uh, there's a short break. Yes, thank you very much, Marino, you and all the speakers of session C. Um, as we are lagging uh, uh, somewhat behind schedule, I would suggest instead of a 10 minute break that we had scheduled to cut this also to five minutes. In any case, this, the next session will be our last. Uh, so I think we can bear through it. Um, so many thanks, everybody. Let's take a short break. Uh, we will reconvene at 1.55, where session D will uh, commence. Thank you all very much.